1812, Amadeo Avogadro hypothesized that equal volumes of different gases under the same conditions of temperature and pressure would have the same number of molecules or the same number of moles of molecules. And so, for example, if you had a balloon filled with nitrogen and an equal sized balloon filled with hydrogen and they were at the same conditions of temperature and pressure, they should hold the same number of particles or the same number of moles of particles. We can also state that in a different way. And that is to say that the volume of a gas is proportional to the number of moles of gas particles that are there. So theoretically, if you doubled the number of moles of gas in your sample, you would double its volume. And using this idea and his ability to produce known amounts of moles of particles, he was able to estimate the size, the volume of a mole of any gas under standard temperature and pressure conditions. We use STP, standard temperature and pressure, to have a baseline, something we can all, re all refer to. Standard temperature is 273 Kelvin, and standard pressure is one atmosphere of pressure. And it turns out that the volume of a mole of any gas under those conditions, assuming it's an ideal gas, would have a volume of 22.4 liters, or about the size of this box. And in your chemistry travels, you may be asked to verify that constant. We call it the molar volume for a gas. And there are several ways to do it. Today I'm going to show you one of them and if all goes according to plan you'll know how to do it yourself when the time comes. To do it we're going to need some equipment. Preferably one of these. This is called a udiometer and it's basically a long glass tube closed at one end with graduations on the side. It, it kind of looks like a burette except there's no nozzle on the end of it. It's just a container for capturing gases and then measuring their volumes. Now this one goes up to 50 milliliters, which is nowhere near 22.4 liters. But what we're going to be doing is saying, if I can produce a known number of moles in here, and then ramp it up to 22, you know, and ramp it up to an entire mole, then I should be able to predict what an entire mole would actually have a volume of. The gas that I'm going to be producing is hydrogen. And I'm gonna do it by reacting some magnesium ribbon with some hydrochloric acid. The magnesium and the hydrochloric acid undergo a single replacement or redox reaction. The magnesium will get oxidized and become aqueous magnesium chloride, and the hydrogen will get reduced and become hydrogen gas, and it should bubble out of the solution. I'm gonna need a lot of magnesium to produce enough hydrogen to fill up the udiometer, so I'm starting with a very small piece, and I need to know exactly how much magnesium this will be so that I know exactly how much hydrogen should be produced. I'm gonna to need to know the exact mass of my magnesium ribbon. So I'm gonna put it on the balance here. And I'm finding that it has a mass of 0 0.038. This is only two significant digits because it's such a small piece of magnesium. I'd like to have more digits, so I'm gonna do something else. Magnesium ribbon is long and it's thin and it's very lightweight. Magnesium is not a very dense metal. So in order to get a better idea of exactly how much magnesium I'm gonna use in my reaction, I'm actually going to measure it by length. So I'm going to first take an entire meter, I've got a whole meter stick here, and I wanna measure out an, an exactly one meter of magnesium ribbon. Tear it off like that. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh it and get a conversion factor for the length to mass ratio of the magnesium ribbon. Now I can put my one meter sample of magnesium on the balance, and it comes out to be 1.584 grams per 100 centimeters. I've measured the length of this piece of magnesium to be 2.55 centimeters long. So if I know the mass of 100 centimeters, and then I know the mass that I have, it should be proportional, and I can get my mass of my magnesium ribbon to three significant digits instead of two. And now for a common setup that will allow the magnesium ribbon to produce the hydrogen gas while inside the udiometer so that none of the hydrogen gas escapes. To do this, we're gonna use a rubber stopper with a little bit of copper wire that I put in there, copper because copper will not react with the hydrochloric acid. And I put a little loop in the end of there. And with that loop, I'm going to take my magnesium ribbon that I've measured out by length and just wrap it around loosely around that edge. The, the point being, the whole idea being that now this magnesium will be suspended inside my tube, and when the tube is upside down, the gas should be produced in the tube. Now we need to get the barometric pressure using our barometer in the room today, and it looks like it's just a hair over 770, let's call it 770.8. And now it's time to fill up the udiometer. 
And because I don't want the reaction to happen until it's fully set up, I want to get my hydrochloric acid down here at the bottom. And so I'm using a two molar solution, fairly concentrated, and I'm going to add about 15 to 20 milliliters of it. It's always a good idea when you're filling something small with a small hole like this is to do it below eye level at an angle, uh, wearing glasses, so that you get less chance of it spilling, and even if it does spill, it's not gonna come from above on top of you. Okay, so I've got just a little over 20 milliliters, that'll be fine. And now I'll fill it up the rest of the way with some distilled water. You'll probably see a little bit of waviness going on as the hydrochloric acid is a little more dense than the water, and so when it starts mixing, you get those little wave things going on. Got my magnesium on the stopper apparatus. That is just gonna go in the end, the stopper was chosen because it has a hole in the bottom and it fits the end of the udiometer and that's going to go in again you can see probably some little wave act waviness in the solution as the hydrochloric acid which is more dense is dropping and mixing with the water down in the tube i'm even starting to see a couple of bubbles happening that's exciting and while the reaction is just getting started this would be a good time to take the temperature of the water back um, I specifically left this water bath out overnight along with the other water I added to the udiometer just to make sure that they were both the same temperature and that they were room temperature. So they, um, I'm reading here 19.0 degrees Celsius. So that's the temperature of the water bath. That's the temperature of the water I put in here and the hydrochloric acid. And here's the important part. I can assume then that the bubbles of gas coming through here are also at that same temperature. And that's the temperature I'm going to use to do my calculations with. Pulling up to the top, it's displacing some of the solution out the hole of the rubber stopper. And it's summing up to a noticeable space here at the top. And we're just gonna let it go and see how much gas we get. Reaction's done. I've collected a little over 37 milliliters of hydrogen gas inside the tube. And I want to make sure that my volume is accurate, so I'm not going to write it down yet. I do have to make an important correction. And also, I want to make sure that the pressure inside is something that I can count on. Um, the pressure inside the tube may be different from the pressure outside in here. I can't get a barometer inside there to measure, so the only way to get an accurate bar barometric pressure or pressure of hydrogen is to get it so that's equal to the pressure in the room. <clears throat> and that's because the pressure in the room may be pushing down on this water in a different way than the pressure is inside the tube. It might be a little bit off. A quick note about a correction factor that I'm gonna do in the calculations, and it's something that we have to do every time we collect gas over water like I'm doing here. Water, and under normal temperatures, is continually evaporating. And so we have this surface of water here and water is actually evaporating into this space along with the hydrogen that I collected. And so I have to account for that. That water vapor is adding to the pressure that's inside this container. And so what I'm gonna have to do is consult a resource that will give me the vapor pressure of water at the temperature that I'm at, which is 19.0. And we just have to subtract out the vapor pressure of water to get the pressure that just the hydrogen itself would be giving me at this point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this off the rig stand. I'm gonna cover up the hole so I don't get any leakage. And I'm gonna put it over here into this large graduated cylinder that I filled most of the way to the top, okay? And the way to fix this and just adjust it is by leveling the level inside the tube with the level outside the tube. So before I put it in there, my level inside the tube is about 37 and a half. But by the time I get it down to the bottom, I'm actually less than 37. I'm about 36 point, let's see, let's make a measurement. Let's say 36.75, 36.75 when those two water levels are equal. Then I know the pressure pushing down inside the tube is the same as the pressure pushing down outside the tube. And I get a better volume reading out of that. So 36.75 milliliters. You'll probably get a little bit wet doing this. 
I always say you're not finished experimenting until you're finished cleaning. So I'm gonna get this cleaned up and let's figure out our molar volume. Okay, so now it's time to do the calculations for this molar volume of hydrogen lab. There's gonna be several steps. Um, so just follow along. If you have a question, you can always email me or put it in the comments. Um, and so I'm just gonna jump right into it. Now, the first thing I wanna do is to find the mass of the magnesium ribbon that I actually used. And remember, I, I measured out 100 centimeters of it. The length of my ribbon uh, is 2.35 centimeters. So I'm just gonna set up a little ratio where 1.589 grams was the entire 100 centimeters of magnesium. And that was for 100 centimeters. So I wanna know what mass would be proportionally for only 2.35 centimeters that I used, all right? And when I do that calculation, I get point X equals 0 0.0373 grams of magnesium that I used. Okay, so you just have to get that. And a reminder that this is three significant digits, whereas my balance would have only given me two sig digs, so I'm feeling good about that. The next thing I wanna do is to figure out the exact pressure of the hydrogen in my apparatus. Now, the, the barometric pressure was 770.8, but remember that that pressure is made up of two gases, the hydrogen and the water vapor that evaporated into the space. So what we're gonna do is make use of Dalton's law, which says the total pressure of a mixture of gases is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the individual gases which is hydrogen and water. So let's put in the total here. So this is my correction factor. And that'll be equal to the pressure of hydrogen plus the pressure of water. Now, what is the vapor pressure of water? Uh, I went to a, a handbook, the CRC handbook of chemistry and physics. It's awesome. And looked it up in a table of vapor pressures at 19 degrees Celsius, which is where I'm at, water can be expected to add 16.477 tors to the total pressure. As the water temperature would increase, more would evaporate, and so that vapor pressure would go up. So it is temperature specific. You'll have to just find a resource that will give you yours at your temperature. And if I subtract out the vapor pressure of water, the pressure of the actual hydrogen is actually 754.3 tor, not as much as the total where it matched the barometric pressure. So that's my correction factor. Okay, so pressure of the height, so let's put that in here, 4.3 tor. And next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna correct the volume to STP because that's what we're, that's our baseline, that's our standard. And what we're gonna do then is use the combined gas law or it's sometimes called the general gas law. Okay, and I know the volume of my gas at this pressure, so 754.3 is the pressure I wanna use. The volume is 36.75 milliliters. I don't have to change that to liters right now. Um, and then the temperature was 19 Celsius or 292.15 Kelvin. Make sure you're using Kelvin temperatures when you're doing these gas laws. Now, let's say this gas were to be adjusted to standard pressure, which is 760 tor, and standard temperature, which is 273.15 Kelvin, what would the new volume be at STP? So we do the math, it turns out to be 34.10 milliliters as opposed to 36.75 milliliters. So the volume would shrink a little bit as it went toward standard temperature and pressure. So correct it to STP, let's do 34.10 milliliters. All right, and we're getting close. We just have a couple more steps. Um, one step would be to figure out, well, how many moles of hydrogen were actually in there? We didn't measure that directly, but we did measure the mass of magnesium. And so we have to do some fun little stoichiometry to find the moles of hydrogen. Uh, we refer back to the original equation. Whenever you do stoichiometry, you have to have a balanced chemical equation. The magnesium plus the hydrochloric acid, which was aqueous, that was solid. Let's do that for fun. Produced some aqueous magnesium chloride and some gaseous hydrogen. What's great about this is that it's all one-to-one -one ratios, well, except for that, one-to-one. -one, and so my mole ratio is gonna be nice and easy. 
0.0373 grams of magnesium was used. And whenever you do stoichiometry, the first thing you want to do is make sure you get to moles. So 24.305 grams from the periodic table. That'll get me moles. And then you have to do a mole ratio. which gives me 0 0.00154 moles of hydrogen. So by doing this calculation inside my burette, my udiometer, I produced, to best my knowledge, that many moles of hydrogen. So we're almost there. We got one more step to go. And that step is to simply take the volume, let's say molar volume equals the volume of the gas that I collected, 0 0.0341 liters. I changed that to liters right there. And that contained 0 0.00154 moles. So proportionally, if I were to create an entire mole of hydrogen under these conditions, what would its volume be? All right, and a quick tap of the calculator shows that the volume would end up being 22.2 .2 liters per mole. All right, so slightly different than Avogadro's constant, which is 22.4 liters per mole at standard temperature and pressure. But I would say I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. It's not bad. Um, you know, I'm, I'm pretty close. Maybe in your travels, your chemistry travels, you'll do better than me. Um, but as long as you do your best and to carry through the calculations like this, 22.2 .2 liters per mole, we'll put a little heart next to that because I think that's a pretty, pretty good result. Okay, so there you have it. Uh, the calculations for the molar volume of Hydrogen Lab. And if you have any questions, please uh, email me or send me in the comments. Uh, in the meantime, happy experimenting and have a great day.